Alrighty, it's time to see if I can uh, get this to work or not. If I can, I can. If I can, I can't, right? But anyway, yeah. Uh, I just got this quick change tool post in the mail. Uh, actually, yesterday. Um, you can kind of see here from this corner of the box. Uh, basically, all they did was they wrapped it in plastic. It was in a plastic bag over top of this and then shipped by UPS. I mean, you can see that it, you know, basically busted open, had some water damage here. Uh, there was no tape holding it here. Um, but, you know, life is life. I mean, you know, nothing's perfect, right? But anyway, um, that's the part number. Now, I got this off of a uh, eBay seller. Now, the picture they have on here is the piston-type quick change tool post. That's not what I ordered, so let's just hope that they sent me the correct thing. All right. Um, this should be... Oh, dang. This is a bit on the heavy side. Um, yeah, because what I ordered was the wedge-type tool post okay this is sealed in a plastic bag what we got here hold it what is that what's that say can we get it on the camera there where are you i'm trying to find it Ooh, look certificate inspector whoever certificate inspector is i guess that just to prove that they did their job and they put that in the bag right um let me grab my little handy dandy old Parker Frost pocket knife. Um, so we got a handle and we got what looks like a threaded steel bar for the handle. There, there it is. Yep. Um, yeah, this little thing is, has some heft to it, and it is greasy. Mm. I don't know. I ain't got no paper towels around here, so we'll just have to see what we can do about not dropping it. Because I have a glass tabletop here, or desktop, so, yeah, we don't want to, definitely don't want to go messing that up. But, yeah, it is a, um, as you can see, a wedge-type tool holder. When these pull up, they lock the uh, tool right there. So, or when they pull, actually, when they drop down, I guess is the way it works. Yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna set this plastic bag here, just that way this little mouse pad don't get covered in oil. But uh, we'll look at this real quick, just to kind of see what's in here let me see if I can adjust my other camera just a little bit there we go now this here what you see in the little picture on the side that is my uh, little microscope uh, USB microscope camera I use that if I'm trying to take close-up pictures of things a lot of times um especially like electronics or stuff like that that uh i'm tinkering with working on whatever um yeah but yeah here we go so this here that's about a quarter inch steel plate on the bottom of there but i really can't use that i don't think um and then you got this this is you know threaded uh, I think they from what I've uh, looked at online this is supposed to be like a 14 millimeter thread I uh, my thread gauges are over in the toolbox so I'm not sure I can't say you know positively if that's what that is but there we have that um, I'm gonna just set this back over in the box with its little plastic bag there. 
And then we'll start cracking these things open and see what these are. Um. Oh, looky. I got another you know, certificate inspector. This one's got a different number on it. He's got a number six. I mean, the other one was in uh, Chinese. I have no idea what that certificate inspector was. But anyway, this is the 250101. Um, which, uh, let me see, actually, see if I can turn a light on right here above my desk. I do have a LED light right here above my desk. It might make things a little better. Um, actually, I actually have two of them. Let me grab some paper towels real quick. Cause this is definitely getting messy. Let's see. Yeah, these things are definitely lubed. They didn't want them to rust in between uh, China and here, that's for sure. I'm just going to leave this paper towel in there. Um, but yeah, so this holds a, you know, lathe tool. Uh, it shows that to be actually... Nine sixteenths is actually the uh, slot size. If I uh, push this tape measure all the way against the bottom and measure it, um, shows to be nine sixteenths. Yep. Um, but yeah, so there's that one. I'm just going to shove it in the box. I'm going to put it in the toolbox here when I get done. Um, that was the 250-101. This is a 250-102. Which is basically the same tool holder except for the bottom. being Instead of it being flat like the 101, it's got a little V-notch in it. They say so you can use it for a um I can spin that around and show it to you. Yeah, right there. You can kind of see it in this camera above. Um but it's got a little V notch in the bottom. And they say that's for uh using like boring bars on a lathe. Mm. Yeah, that they definitely uh wanted to make sure they're oily, that's for sure. But so there's that one. Um, oh, and can't forget. Look, yeah. You know, where is it? Where is it? There it is. There it is. Certificate Inspector zero six again. That's a single zero six. So don't confuse that with double o six, uh, which was uh, James Bond's friend, right? Anyway. Um, this one is a 20, or excuse me, 250 110. Okay, so this has a knurling tool on this end. Yeah, that's a knurling tool. Basically, you know, a lot of people say don't use them because it'll mess up your lathe because you're putting so much side pressure on the uh, part that it messes the bearings up in a lathe. But this other side, you got two set screws so you can put a uh, bar, you know, a uh, you know tool on this end and use this as a, uh, you know, lathe tool for maybe putting like a boring bar or even... Uh, you know, just putting the uh, triangular end on it, basically to uh, you know run your uh, chamfers and stuff on parts. 
Chant first, camp first, chant for whatever it is. There we go. Uh, this is a 107. 250, 107. So this is a parting tool holder. Is what that is. That's a parting tool holder. What in the world is my camera off? Hold on a second. No earthly idea why it's being that way. But it is, so I'm not going to mess with it because I know as soon as I mess with it too much, it's going to really uh, take care of me. You know what I'm saying? It ain't going to work out very well. All right, so there we go. Uh, so, yeah, that's a uh, tool holder for a um, cutting blade, basically for parting stuff, cutting stuff apart on a lathe. And it's got a set screw here. Looks like that goes okay. That goes through here. And this has got a wedge right here that it pulls it down against the tool. That's my guess as to what that's doing. And then, let's see. Oh, by the way, I did start taking the lathe apart to look and see if this stuff's going to fit. I'll find out here in a minute if it's going to work or not. This is a 104, 250, 104. And by the way, the 250 series... Uh, 250 and then the one thing numbers that start with 100 that's supposed to be the AXA style uh, tool post or size tool post which is supposed to be they I, I've seen it many different ways on many different websites some say it's for 9 to 12 inches of uh, swing distance on your lathe some said that it was for I think it said 6 to 12 um, I don't know. My lathe said it was 8.75 is what the swing distance is. Supposedly, I can take an 8.75 8. Uh, piece of uh, metal and turn it in my lathe. You know, whether I can or not, I don't know. Let me see if I can adjust this top camera just a little bit. Oh, no. We'll turn it just a little bit. Um, I'd like to make it so both these are showing the same on the same plane, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? So let me do some more turning. We'll turn it some more. I'm gonna have to move it. Turn it a little more. That's about it, I think. I think that's putting them about on the same plane, so to speak. Just so you're seeing them from a different angle, so to speak, anyway. So, yeah, that, uh, that's that. So, I will uh, install it. Hopefully, uh, if I can, I'll record it. Um, I mean, it all depends on whether or not that uh, bolt or stud that holds the uh, tool post down if it'll fit my lathe. If not, I'll have to modify either the bolt or I'll have to modify the lathe, one of the two. Um, honestly, I think I'd rather modify the actual bolt that holds it down because I won't say bolts are dime a dozen, but I can buy another bolt quicker than I can buy another uh, slide uh, or compound, whatever you want to call it, for my lathe. You know what I'm saying? Um, now, what I did use, and I'll put it in the uh, video title, I got a, um, it's a, what is it, Vivor, I think it is the name of it, Vivor, Velvor, or whatever. Um, like I say, it shows to be an 8.75 by 30. So, you know, between center, supposedly you can put a 30-inch piece of uh, material. Um I'm guessing from what I see by using a live center and using the chuck on the lathe, the most I'll probably be able to get on that is a 20 to, let's say, you know, 20 inch to 24 inch. So, you know, you know, two foot or less um, as far as, uh, you know, material in between those centers. Um, 
unless I take those off and use, you know, a, uh, you know, dog to uh, turn the item. Uh, but yeah, honestly, I have no use in doing anything like that myself. I just have no use in it. Um, at least not this time, because mainly what I'm planning on making are things along the lines of bushings and fittings uh, for uh, like control arm parts for my Corvette. Um, and then uh, plus I'll machine some odds and end parts for some other people that want some stuff made from time to time. But um, yeah, I mean, it's a hobby for me. I and mean, I'm pretty much retired and, uh, you know, it's, I'm going to be sitting around the house doing what I'm doing, if you know what I mean. But, uh, yeah, I appreciate y'all watching this. Uh, y'all that did, hope somebody found it useful. Uh, if you want, I mean, I can uh, link in the uh, description the buyer or well, seller I bought this from because you know, they, they sold it to me at a uh, decent little deal. I think I gave like $115 for this uh, on the uh, eBay. But, hey, y'all take it easy. Have a good one. Uh, if you don't have a good one, don't blame me because I had nothing to do with it. But uh, I do appreciate it. Y'all have a good day there. Bye now.